G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video I'm going to be running through some of my desktop setups and also other things that you would do in Ubuntu to improve the Linux experience. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously update our system. Um, now there's a couple of ways you could probably do that. In software you could go to updates, it says your system is up to date. Uh, that's one way of doing it. It'll sh probably show up uh, updates in the software there, Ubuntu software. Or the other thing we can do, terminal, I'll just right click and add that to favorite so I don't have to keep searching for it. There it is there. And we shall type sudo apt update, put in your password, and all packages are up to date. And uh, if there were any updates, you could uh, sudo apt upgrade and that would upgrade the system. So you will probably have updates showing in software, possibly. Um, the other way you can do that is do a search for update. You got software and updates and software updater. So this is the software updater. It'll check for updates. Software on this computer is up to date. Okay, now doing that with the software updater is the same as sudo apt update. And when you do an update, it'll say there's updates available. And if there was updates available in the graphical updater, now that's doing exactly the same as what we typed here, sudo apt update. And if there was updates there and you click install now, that would be the same as doing sudo apt upgrade. And that would upgrade the same as the graphical environment. So that's how you do that with your updates. So that is updating the system. The second thing you can do is additional drivers. Just type AWD, there's additional drivers there. And it's searching for additional drivers, and I don't have any. Um, I do have a wireless driver, and apparently it's not working properly. Maybe that's the um, the woes of all my internet problems. <laughs> it's not working properly, so I don't know what that's all about. So if you had some uh, NVIDIA drivers or any other uh, Broadcom drivers and all that, then more than likely they'll show up in here. So what we can do is install some things from the Ubuntu software, which is this one here. So I'm going to install dconf editor. So we'll search for dconf. And we have dconf editor there. I don't know if it's a snap or not. Oh, it's from the Ubuntu focal universe. So you can see now that they got the snaps and also from the Ubuntu repositories as well under the same software center. I think I just missed that before. or I, I wasn't searching for the right applications maybe in the beta video I did. So that's install dconf editor. Next we're going to install Synaptic. So what we do is we search for Synaptic. Synaptic package man manager we're going to install but we'll search for Synaptic. Synaptic package manager and I think that's from the Ubuntu repositories as well. So let's install that. Then we'll install GNOME Tweaks. Now we need to search for GNOME Tweaks. That may sound like a, a strange thing to say, but um, I, I typed in Tweaks and let's just do an example. I typed in, and now it's showing up. And it must have been the um, that they've had an issue with uh, too many users attaching to the Ubuntu software, so it slowed it down a bit. So maybe that's why it wasn't coming up in my search. So there's GNOME tweaks. So if you typed in tweaks and it didn't find it, do a search for GNOME tweaks. It found it for me. So let's install that. Next, we're going to install weather. Now, 
Now I had to search for gnome weather before. It looks like I don't have to on this occasion now. Or do I? There it is, weather. Install. Now that one will come up in here. Now it won't be showing yet, but if we do Alt F2 and R and that just restarts the gnome shell, you'll find that the weather is now there. Going to install Audacity. Some of these are for my personal use, to be honest. And let's just see what that is. That's a snap, so we'll install that. Don't know how long it's going to take. Snaps can take a little bit longer than the normal repos. And that's Audacity installed. Let's um, click back one and look for GIMP. And I'm sure that's a snap. That's a snap, so let's install that. Let's have a look at Synaptic and we can do this as we go along. As you can see, there's no GIMP from the Ubuntu repositories here. That's the one I just... I just installed the top one. This one's another one. That's from Snap as well. So if you was to do a search in here for GIMP, then that's GIMP there. That will be from the Ubuntu repositories. So that's another way of installing. If you don't want Snaps, you can install it from the Ubuntu repositories, 2.10.18 there. And what was this one? 2.10.18 so that's another option is the synaptic package manager if you don't want to do snaps and that would go the same for probably all of these here weather um, audacity would be another one And there's Audacity there, 2.3.3. I don't know what the one is that we did here. Two point three point three. So they're the same pretty much. So I've just installed GIMP and then we'll do Telegram. It'll be Telegram dash desktop, I believe. That's the one I normally install, so that's Snap as well. So let's install that. I'm going to try and install a lot of Snaps and see how they fare on running on the system and whether they cause me any grief or not. It's only fair that we give them a go, see how they go. And that is Telegram installed. And then we'll go back one and install Zoom. Apparently there's a Zoom now for Snaps. Zoom, install that. Now in Synaptic Package Manager, you might find Telegram, but maybe not on Zoom. Telegram-desktop is there. I'm not sure, but you definitely won't find Zoom because it's not part of the Ubuntu repositories. There's a Zoom player, but that's not the same thing. So there won't be no Zoom in there at all. And Telegram and Desktop was 2.0.1, 2.1. So that's a little bit ahead. This is 2.0. So it says here, uh, install snap change in progress. It cannot, in, unable to install. So just keep in, um, I've experienced this before. I think someone's just, uh, making a change to it and you either got to keep <clears throat> trying or just oh it's actually at 51 percent there at one stage yeah it got to the 50 percent mark and then it says unable to install zoom client i'll have to try that one again later that's happened before that's nothing unusual there people can be working on them and they cannot be installed that's fine cherry tree is a Snap as well, I believe, now as well. So I'll try that. 
change in progress. So same deal. <laughs> All right, okay. TLP you can install for laptops only. I haven't got a laptop, so I won't be installing it, but we'll just do a search for it. So there's no TLP to be found there. So that may be a Synaptic Package Manager. So we may need to search for TLP in Synaptic. There it is there. You can install it from there. This one should be a dependency and should install with this one anyway, I think, I believe. VirtualBox is in here and it's the up-to-date version, so I'm going to install that. It is 6.1.6 .6 on the website. Oh, I could not get locked because I've got Synaptic Package Manager open, so I've just closed it. You can have Synaptic open if you're installing Snaps, but if you're installing from the Ubuntu repositories, you're either doing it from the Synaptic or you're doing it from the software, but you, can't, you cannot do both at once will lock you out and that is VirtualBox installed and then I'll check out Blender Blender will also be a snap that's install that snap change in progress as well and VLC so I'll give Blender a miss for now Is that a snap? Yep. Snap change in progress. Okay, so, um, all right. You can change where the snaps come from if you want the latest candidate, the latest beat up, the latest edge, which would be um, the up to date. It could be unstable probably, but this is, you know, we're looking at the stable here. So you can do that with a lot of the snaps. But we're not having any luck with installing snaps at the moment. Uh, this is installing software. I could, um, if we have a look at the version here, 3.08. And if I have a look at Synaptic. VLC 3.0.9, 3.0.8 for VLC. Blender version is 2.82. And Blender in Synaptic is 2.82a as well, so they're the same. So outside of the Ubuntu software, we're going to install GNOME Clocks. We're going to do that. I don't know if GNOME Clocks will be in here because it's not showing up in software. GNOME Clocks, there it is in Synaptic. Maybe it will show up in software now because it wasn't showing up earlier. GNOME Clocks. There it is there. So, okay, so the one that we want, Clocks for World Times, the Simple Gnome, the Simple Gnome app um, does not show up in here, but this one does. So we'll install that. That's from the Ubuntu repositories. And if we're in the terminal, we could go sudo apt install gnome-clocks that's the other way you could do it could not get a lock because I've got synaptic open again let's try that again and gnome clocks is installed so we're going to install Google Chrome and this is the link to do so so let's go into Firefox and that's the link download Chrome which I have done Google Chrome that's the latest that's the one I just downloaded or you can accept, install and open with Archive Manager. And that should probably open up with, no, we don't have GDB installed, do we? Let's go to software. That's one I missed out on is GDB. GDB Package Manager Installer. That needs to be installed. And that's from the Ubuntu repositories. The other way you can do that is sudo apt install gdebbie that's the other way you could do it you could also search for gdebbie in the synaptic package manager so that's gdebbie installed let's just download that again and see what happens it'll download with a open with gdebbie package installer okay and let's see if that works this time 
And there we go, it's opened up. And install package. So that's one I can add to the file is gdebbie. That needs to be installed from Ubuntu software. So gdebbie I'll add to my notes here um, from Ubuntu software. Installation is finished. Close. And we should have Google Chrome in our menu. There it is there. Library, I need to install library because I'm signed up to library. So let's have a look at library here. Download app image or .deb, which I've done. I've downloaded the .deb. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can do the same thing. I'm not going to download it again. It's a big, it's 120 odd megabytes. My download speed's not the best today. But you could probably do the same as Google Chrome. In my case, I've downloaded the library here and 0.45 is the latest, so let's install that. It opens up with GDebbie anyway. Anything that's a .deb will open up with GDebbie. It's like downloading a .exe for Windows, really, at the end of the day. So let's install the package. And that is the installation complete should have library in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, hopefully it's a bit quieter in here because I was installing something on a laptop and it was quite noisy. So we're going to install YouTube DL and we're going to do that with the terminal with this command here. That installs the latest um, YouTube DL. Uh, curl is not found, so it tells you here sudo apt install curl. Copy that, paste, put in my password, clear that, and arrow up for your previous commands. That one there. And I forgot to put sudo, so it cannot put that file in there. sudo. So we're going to sudo. You've got to have sudo in this command. And paste now that we've installed curl and enter that to put in my password and then after that's complete we need to make it executable so we copy this command here and paste it into here and I forgot sudo again So I've got the wrong command there, should be user bin. This one is, sometimes they change. So I'll change that to user bin and no output means that's okay. So I was wondering what was going on there. So that should be, it's got to match this one here. Sometimes it can be different, people do it differently. I've obviously got the wrong, wrong one there. I thought I got my information from the, the same Place for that one, which was Esnix is the one who who um, has got that one. But uh, sometimes it changes. They may have just copied it from the wrong place. So that's YouTube DL installed the latest. Etcher. Now you can download Belina Etcher. But the other thing in here is I've been using disks. Um, disks. This one here. So when you've got a hard drive there, you can restore disk image, and you can look for a disk image and write it to disk. You've got to be careful not to be selecting your actual drives. That could be a big mistake. So I'm very weary about this one because it doesn't just look for USBs. It also finds your um, data drive and your system drive. So if it actually clings onto one of those and you don't notice, <laughs> you could be in big trouble. So that's the only thing that worries me about this. And then you've got this startup disk creator which looks only for um, USB flash drive. So that's probably a better option, but I'm not sure if that's just for Ubuntu or for anything. I'm not sure, I'm gonna to have to try that one out. Failing that, I'll install Belina Etcher, which will be a, um, an app image. Okay, so next we are going to do another terminal command. We're going to install Ubuntu Restricted Extras and the Lib DVD package. I believe now that they're probably all in one. Uh, don't forget sudo. 
sudo apt install Ubuntu restricted extras and libdvd-pkg and yes and tab press the tab key for OK and agree to that tab key again for yes and agree to the EULA and we need to run this command here yes okay that is done let's clear the screen now we're going to install Java because it helps with um, web fonts and we need to install some uh, zip programs as well to help you unzip some things um, the Java one I know it does help you um, if you're install if you're looking through Google Maps and all that any maps on the internet can help to um, can help to render the information that's needed on the maps otherwise it may not be fully complete and that is complete and then we're going to install Chrome Gnome Shell which will help with extensions so we don't have to bother looking for that um, after we install the extension on gnomeextensions.org I think it is now we can install Flatpak support if you want. I'm not going to bother with that right now. See if I can do everything with um, snaps for now. If you want uh, Flatpak support, um, install Flatpak, um, run this command here, wait till that's finished and then add the repository, the Flatpak repo, and that's those two commands there. It should be all up and running for you. So that is all of those things installed now we're going to en enable minimize click so so if we click on this it won't minimize we can minimize it here but it won't minimize here as you can see so you can easily um, copy and paste this into the terminal and that'll change it or we can use deconf editor and it gives you warning to be careful so we need to go to org gnome so org gnome shell shell extensions dash to dock and look for minimize so what we're looking for here is um, click action is what we're looking for which is this one here click action click on that uncheck or we'll toggle off the default and then we select any one of these so it's up to you you can choose whatever you want there it's up to you I'm going to choose minimize and click the tick button and that's done so now we should be able to minimize the window from there like so now show battery percentage there is a battery percentage um, extension but I think there is also one in here as well so if we go to tweaks and let's right click that and add that to favorite so we don't have to go searching for it and tweaks so it says here open gnome tweaks select top bar which is this one here slide battery percentage setting to on battery percentage so I don't think it'll work for me because I'm not on a laptop so also you can um, check on activities overview hot corner which is this one here and if you turn that off it doesn't do anything and you've got a couple of other tweaks here as well in the top bar so that's the battery percentage you can change your touchpad scroll direction open settings go to mouse and touchpad um, so we're in tweaks at the moment let's go to settings mouse and touch bad and you can change the left or right buttons which one's the main click and you can change the mouse speed and natural scrolling from there um, we can change window theme auto hide dock 
icon size, dock monitor position, move dock to bottom or right in settings and appearance. So if we, did I close that? Did I have a bad habit of doing that? Settings and appearance. You've got a light theme. So let's have a look, see if we can um, bring this up here to home folders, light theme, standard, and a dark. So there are your options there. I'll keep it on standard for now. You can show the dock. You can auto hide the dock. So it hides and then you can touch it and it returns. You can turn that off. You can change the icon sizes like so. And you can show the dock on all displays on one or the other. You can change it and the dock position can be on the right. It can be on the bottom. And if it was on the bottom, you'd probably want to change the size of that to make it more appropriate. I'll leave it on the left for now. Put it on the default. You've also got file history and trash settings in set settings and privacy. Privacy here. File history and trash. You can uh, turn off file history. File history duration forever or only for that amount of time. You can clear the file history. Um, automatic deletion of trash. Automatic, automatically delete temporary files. That's a good one. I might turn that on. And automatically delete period 30 days. So you can empty your trash right now. And you can delete temporary files right now. So GNOME shell extensions. Let's go to that. And that's here. So what we're going to be doing there is installing some extensions. First of all, user themes. So we need to click here to install the browser extension at um, support. So add that. OK, got it. Refresh the page. And now we're all right to go because we installed Chrome GNOME Shell earlier. This one here. So you don't get that second um, warning there that you, you still have to install something else. We've done it in advance. So now we go to user themes. Toggle on user themes, install that, that's on, and we go to the tweak tool. If we go to appearance, we can now choose a shell theme. You may have to close that and open it back up again because we've only just installed it. And there you go. Yaru dark for the shell. So when you click on these, they're now dark. Um, this one here will be dark instead of white. So if we go back to default, that's a default, Yaru Dark. I like the Yaru Dark better. Uh, GS Connect. So we go back and search for GS Connect for connecting your Android phone. GS Connect. And you need to have KDE Connect installed on your Android phone. And let's toggle that on and install it. Install that. And I'm hoping all of these are up to date and um, compatible with GNOME 3.36. Uh, caffeine. Well, I thought there was a caffeine um, extension. Maybe there's not. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've created the video and I'm still going with the video. And I, I don't tend to uh, be in any, any hurry to get these things done because as you can see here on the main page of GNOME extensions caffeine is actually here so it might have been the developer was working on it at the time that I searched for it that might have been the case and he's probably bringing it the development up to speed uh, to be compatible with 2004 quite possibly and that's probably why it didn't show up when I made the video. So as you can see, just toggle it on and click install like the previous ones. And you should be right to go. Um, the other thing, there is a, um, a battery extension. But I have already shown you that there's a battery um, within the system itself, which we looked at earlier. But there is a battery percentage there if you wanted to try that. I don't know whether the battery percentage extension is better than the
the onboard one, which is uh, which was in here somewhere. Top bar, I think it was, battery percentage. I'm not sure whether this one offers more options or not. So that would be, uh, it could be worthwhile looking at. And the other thing, uh, because I was sort of um, setting up my desktop while making this video, um, I'm probably a bit biased to the things that I use, but um, you also got dash to dock, which is the other one. Dash to dock is a nice um, extension to use as well. Gives you more options for the dock. Although now we seem to have um, within actually the settings itself. If we go to the settings, so if we go to settings and we go to appearance, you can you know you can change left, bottom, and right here. So dash to dock does offer. A lot more than that um, and you can install it if you want here as well and you probably need to turn off the dash to dock Ubuntu dock you probably need to check that off although I think if you install dash to dock it'll probably automatically do that for you I would think also another one that I've heard of is top icons plus I think it is top icons now that may not be in here anymore because um, everything, there seems to be top icons running in the top panel anyway. So you've got tray icons, but you've got all these here. That, that's my um, simple screen recorder, my library, um, my caffeine. So anything that opens that uses that. So if I was to open, say, Telegram, for example, and you've got the Telegram up there as well. So I think uh, Ubuntu of done a pretty good job of uh, introducing these um, running apps up the top here. So whether you really do need um, Top Icons Plus anymore or not, I don't know. But it doesn't seem to be there anyway. I think that was the name of it anyway. Top Icons Plus, there it is. Oh, so it's all one word. So this extension moves legacy tray icons, bottom left of GNOME shell to the top panel. Okay, so that seems to be all working in Ubuntu anyway at the moment, but you might want to give that one a go. That's another one you could try. So they're the main extensions that I'm aware of. If you wanted to know any, anything more about popular extensions, you could probably do a search on uh, GNOME extensions. You could probably um, do a search on that, and get a list like this one here, and uh, that'll tell you what the most uh, popular extensions are and what they do. Uh, Coverflow Alt Tab I installed as well, which um, gives you that preview, which I quite like. Ubuntu Pit is the name of this one. I'll leave that. I'll leave that in the um, show notes. So that was some of the um, GNOME extensions for Ubuntu 2004. Uh, we'll go for Arc Menu, Arc Menu. Turn that on and install. And then we have dash to panel. Dash to panel, turn that on, install it, and you'll probably find that this dock will go to the bottom when it's done, like so. And we also have the arc menu attached. And that's the end of my file. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Now this arc menu, if we right click that and we go to arc menu settings, we can Go to Appearance, Menu Layout, and we can choose all different sorts of layouts here. Traditional layouts, oh, we've got more here now. Traditional layouts, modern layouts, well, look at this. They've added even more to this. Touch layouts, simple layouts, so they've got uh, categories for this now. Launcher layouts and alternative layouts. Raven start menu style, wow. So on arc menu at the moment. Budgie style, mint style, no menu style, whisker menu, brisk menu style. The modern layouts are Windows 10 style. Let's check that one out, apply that. That's Windows 10 style. Ubuntu Dash style. Oh yeah, Ubuntu Dash has got those down the bottom there, yep. And you've got all these down the side, games, internet and so forth. Home, documents, downloads, 
So we can do that. Okay. Touch layouts, Chromebook style, elementary menu style. Let's try that one. Yep, I don't mind that. It's just a complete scroll down. That's not too bad. Is there a category you can change? No. Doesn't look like it. Um, where was the elementary one? It was in elementary and touch, touch layouts, simple layouts, simple menu style, simple menu two style, launcher layouts, K runner, gnome and dash style. Let's try that one. Oh, yeah, so it gives you the activities overview. So it's pretty much the same as the hot corner. Actually quite like that. Raven menu style, let's check that out. I'll check that out. And you got the world clocks and the weather in here as well. That's pretty handy. Um, I think I like the uh, arc menu for now. Let's choose that. The mint menu one's not bad either. So that's traditional like Windows 7, I think, that one there. So that is all the things I wanted and also the extras that will come in handy for a lot of other people watching this video. Um, I only have one more thing to do and that is I have my other disk here and I've got my documents downloads and so forth so I need to make uh, create some links so there's no links showing in the preferences there so let's go to preferences the other thing sort folders before files it looks like that's default for now that's good um, behavior list columns uh, search and preview all right where's the links gone <laughs> Where's the show links button? Is there a show links? Ah, oh, show action to create symbolic links. There we go. So that's create link for documents and downloads. So let's hit the shift key, hit the first one, hold the shift key and that'll highlight them all. Cut those into the home folder like so. And then we'll delete music move to rubbish, move to rubbish, videos, move to rubbish, documents, move to rubbish, and downloads, move to rubbish. And then we'll rename these. And you'll see that um, it takes on the, the little icon inside the folder there once you rename it to the correct name. Very hard finding a good icon that doesn't hide that picture, but at least this one's uh, the little shows you that it is a link. It's not too bad. Now the other thing we need to do is open disks while that uh, partition. Well, actually, that's escape out of there. While that partition is open, which it is, it's you can tell there's an eject button there, so it's mounted. So while it's mounted, so this is a one terabyte SSD, and that's where I keep all my things and my computer is a 250 gig where the operating system is installed so this is where I keep all my documents and so forth so what I will do is open disks for the one terabyte disk we're going to go to here and edit mount points and all we need to do here is un untoggle that and click OK Put in your password and that's all you need to do and that disk will mount every time you start up and you will have your links to everything that you're doing here that's all my links now the other thing I've got inside of this um, not that one this one here is if I um, show hidden files I've got dot thunderbird dot mozilla and google chrome 
So what I need to do there is um, I keep these here. They don't move anywhere. I just create a link to these. Create link to Google Chrome. Create link to Thunderbird. And create link to Mozilla Thunderbird. Now if I open another window here, a new window, and I go to my home folder, which I am, you got dot .mozilla and um, there's no dot .thunderbird yet because I ha haven't opened up Thunderbird. So I will probably put my details in Thunderbird before I copy the link over. And then Google Chrome, we've got the link here. So if I do Google Chrome, um, that'll be in dot .local, um, no, dot .config and uh, Google Chrome. So if I delete this Google Chrome, uh, move that to rubbish bin, and cut this link into here, paste it and rename it Google Chrome. And now Google Chrome should have everything up to date where I was when I was last running my previous operating system, which was Ferran OS. So let's have a look. We'll go to um, Google Chrome. I don't even know if I've opened it yet. I probably haven't, no. Yep, unlock the profile, please. And there's my Google Chrome. And I don't even have to sync uh, Google because everything is there that I need. No problems at all. I'm not sure if I have to log in, log back into Google or not. I'm not sure. So that's that done. And uh, Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox. Not sure if I have too much on there that I need to link, but I may link it anyway, just make sure it's closed. So link to Mozilla, let's go back to home. Uh, let's remove Mozilla, cut that link into here and paste, and rename that. And that's done. So every little change I make to Thunderbird and Firefox and Google Chrome, it's kept on this one terabyte hard drive. So when I change operating systems, I just need to redo the links. I won't, like I said, I won't do Thunderbird yet. I'll do that later. But you get the gist now, I suppose. So now um, with this menu here, um, dash to panel settings you got here. So if you did want the panel on the left, or the panel on the right. Um, this might be a good time to use the do not disturb. <laughs> um, let's see, panel on the uh, bottom for now and on the time, do not disturb. <laughs> Should have done that because I wasn't logged in before. Uh, this is a dash to panel setting. So you have got uh, left, you can put it on the right and you can put it on the top. You can pretty much put it anywhere now. And I'll put it back on the bottom. There we go, the, I just had to, um, I think the name shell had to restart for that. Okay, so that completes my um, desktop setup and other things to do for Ubuntu 20.04. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.